If you are suffering jumping from diet to diet and you're looking for sustainable weight loss, today I'm going to tell you guys my story with weight loss and the diet that ended all diets for me. I'm going to tell you the one thing that you can do right now to release weight naturally instead of throwing caution to the wind with another fat diet that doesn't work. In fact, what I'm going to teach you guys today is this through a story that illustrates the common struggle that most women face today with weight loss with a big surprise at the end. So I hope you'll stick with me so that you can do and follow through with what I'm going to share with you today that really changed my life and changed the trajectory of my, of my health. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the last diet that I was on. It's what I call Whole30 on steroids. I committed to trudging through 30 days of eating only fruits, vegetables, um, animal protein, and I added every single rule from years of yo-yo dieting to that. I was intermittent fasting. I focused on high fat in my keto diet. And I, um, I also did some calorie counting. So I thought that if I tried every single diet combined into one, that I would lose weight and that I would see the result on the scale and that I would finally be able to have the result that I wanted and go on and, and live my life. I'm sure you guys have felt that feeling where you're like, I'm just going to do this until I lose the 10 pounds and then I'm going to eat normally, right? So that's kind of where I was at this point. And after years of yo-yo dieting, honestly, my body didn't really trust me anymore. And I thought that this Franken diet I was on was going to be the key, the latest practical dieting research that was really going to help me lose this weight once and for all. Um, but the truth is, is that I went through a lot of... Um, struggle. I went through a lot of issues during that time that ended up harming my body and doing more harm to me emotionally and physically than good. So what I want to share with you is that when we go on a diet journey, sometimes we power through that journey because we believe that weight loss is on the other side. But if we continue to do that, we're not really listening to our body's needs. We're actually listening to what the diet is telling us, which creates distrust in the body. And for me, when I was doing this Franken diet that, um, that I was following through with, I ended up having horrible chest pains. I had sleepless nights. I would sweat and soak through my sheets. I had a lot of anxiety every single day around 10 o'clock in the morning because I wasn't eating and I was fueled only by coffee. And I thought that this calorie restriction, high fat, high protein, totally clean diet was gonna help me lose the weight that I wanted to lose. And what I really wanted was the confidence that I had had years prior when I felt like I actually enjoyed my body. But the truth is, looking back, I thought I enjoyed my body, but I actually had body dissatisfaction for a long time because of the yo-yo dieting cycle that I was stuck in with 30, 40 um, pound fluctuations. So I want to know if you've ever done this before, if you've ever started following a diet plan to lose weight and something tells you that something isn't quite right. Maybe you have pain, maybe you have a sleepless night, maybe you're sweating, maybe you're too hungry, maybe you are really groggy or you're not feeling very well, but you followed through with the diet anyway because you just wanted to lose weight, right? So when we stick with it like that, we're again telling our bodies that we don't trust ourselves and that we have to follow some rigid rules in order to be able to lose weight once and for all. And women who want to lose weight only know one way of doing things. You want to lose weight. Every day you tell yourself how you have to lose weight and how much you have to lose and how much you hate yourself when you look in the mirror, when you look on the scale in order to be able to make these changes. You might avoid taking pictures or you might make sure that you're in the back of pictures. You might adjust your clothes while you're sitting down. You might step on the scale to see how much progress you make. And then you also might step on the scale to see how much damage you've done or how far you need to go. But this has a certain quality or certain energy, a certain feeling to it. And that feeling is heavy, hard, stuck, and frustrating. Those feelings are going into the body and again, creating this stress in the body over the things that you eat, the thoughts that you have, and the lifestyle that you're choosing in order to lose weight. It's fueled by frustration, self-deprivation, self-loathing, and all of those um, energies are causing us to feel less than. So in order to lose weight, you are trying to go from a place of feeling less than, of feeling um, 
you know, comparing yourself to other people of feeling like you are so far from your goal that you're never going to get there. And this is why we end up giving, um, giving up on ourselves. So that's the energy that, that I call weight loss energy. That's the energy that we don't want to be in. Even if we're on a weight loss journey, we don't have to choose to be in that place in order to be able to lose weight. So here's something to think about. What if instead you took action every day because you saw the opportunity to be healthy and strong? You have the dedication, the system, and the support to choose health today because you're happy with how you feel in your body, not the diet that you're on. So I want you to consider how you can eat so that you can feel good instead of how you can eat to lose weight. I want you to consider how you can have positive thoughts and a positive sense of self for your body so that you make choices that are in alignment with feeling positive and feeling um, happy and feeling joyous in your body. Because when we're on the diet, we are making choices in order to lose weight because we don't love ourselves. That feels very far away from each other, right? So it's not sustainable. If I love myself today and I'm making choices to feel good, those things are aligned and that's why it sustains me for the long haul. All right, so anyone could follow a list of foods for a few weeks, that's the diet. I'm going to give you guys the number one thing that I want you to do if you wanna release weight naturally, that will also free yourself and you can help you start listening to your body so that you can have sustainable results. I want you to tell you guys about a result that I've gotten with a client of mine who came in and she had been dieting since she was a teenager. She couldn't get to the bottom of what was holding her back from losing weight. Taking the next powerful step that I'm going to share with you today changed the trajectory of her health just like it changed the trajectory of mine. The one thing that was at the beginning of getting clear on that was holding her back was her motivation to commit to the work came from the scale. We shifted her motivation into the things that she cared about in her life most. And then I told her to do this number one thing that I'm gonna tell you guys to do today. She didn't need to follow a rigid rule. She didn't need to fast. She didn't need to count calories and she didn't need to remove all of the food groups that, um, that were considered, you know, no, no food groups in order to be able to lose weight. She redefined her relationship with herself. And when I ask her what drives her today, she doesn't mention weight loss or fitting into a certain size. She does the inner work and the outer work actually followed that. So before I tell you all what you can do, the number one thing that you can do in order to start listening to yourself for sustainable weight loss, as opposed to going and diet after diet after diet and self-loathing is to finish a little bit of my story that I was telling you earlier about my whole 30 on steroids Franken diet that I was doing. Um, after all the pain and the issues and the sleepless nights and the sweating and the, um, the anxiety that I was experiencing, the stomach cramps, all of that, I stepped on the scale and what happened surprised me. I looked down at the number and I didn't get a new result. I put myself through all of that work without getting a new result on the scale. And I know that you may have been there before. And I thought this was crazy. I thought there was something wrong with me. I thought there was something wrong with the scale, right? I had no idea why it wouldn't budge when I did everything that I could possibly do in order to lose weight. The scale that I had been attached to for 20 years didn't tell me the truth about my body. The scale was my enemy and it was time to do away with it. My best friend came over and we ran over it with a car. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but after 20 years of yo-yo dieting and 30 pound fl weight fluctuations, it was time to do something different. It was time to empower ourselves and free ourselves and free myself from the scale. And she did the same thing. So we smashed the scale into a thousand pieces. Each one of those pieces represented the negative thoughts that I had about myself that I would, that, that I would use to stop taking the action. And this is the moment that I said, I'm going to listen to my body. I am not going to listen to the number on the scale. It's the moment I started learning the power of tuning into my body for sustainable change instead of following temporary diet plans in order to get a number on the scale. Running over the scale revealed that I was responsible for my own well-being, and that meant more to me than a number. It meant that I could finally really live.
And this is what I did. And this is for every woman who has given up the scale to save herself from dieting and learn about her body needs in order to be successful with sustainable weight loss and to be able to listen to her body for the long haul. Otherwise, we're still blindly following some other plan that wasn't even written for us. And that plan is going to end up um, falling off uh, eventually because we can't sustain something that doesn't feel aligned to how we are and who we are. So when people ask me, what is the number one critical step in reclaiming your health, in releasing weight naturally, in having self-love, it is getting rid of the scale. It is putting the scale somewhere else. It's giving it away. It's running it over with a car and smashing it into a thousand smith smithereens. Okay. So I want you to stop stepping on the scale, stop anticipating the damage that you're doing to your body. Stop using it to beat yourself up because it didn't work for me. It doesn't work for the women that I work with, and it's not going to work for you anymore either. You can create change from your heart and your life instead of from your weight. Both can lead to weight loss, but only one gives you your life back now. If you're not in my support group yet, I want to invite you guys to join. It's called the Weight Loss Breakthroughs for Women Over 40. You can visit the link in my bio or search us up on Facebook, and I would love to see you there. I hope you enjoyed this training and that you guys will tune in with me on Wednesdays at one o'clock to learn more about weight loss breakthroughs for women over 40 who are ready to stop the fad diet cycle. Hope you have a great day.